after some discussion with, with our stakeholders and participating in things like the poverty workshops that we had here locally, we see a very strong need for mentoring and for having the involvement of our community members. If you look at the research, when you're looking at building resiliency, especially for children, um, the one thing that makes a huge difference is if they have one single caring adult that they can count on. We have the data to back up the attendance has improved because these students know that their um, tutor is going to be in the after school program that day. We have the data to back up reading 3D scores have improved. But if you look at the other side, the relationship building, we have seen firsthand where the students will see their C4C member and they will run up. It's like a surrogate grandparent. And it's not just about academics like I think it started out. It's about I care for you. The C4C project was started to fight the impact that poverty has on our children and their families in the community. But what we found was our call to follow Jesus, make disciples, and transform the world took us beyond the walls of our own church into the community. And I believe our, our, our community was transformed. We became the community we were meant to be. But also, the transformation didn't just happen out there. It happened for us. We became the church we were always meant to be. When, when our C4C friends first reached out to me, I really didn't want them in the building because I find often that a lot of folks want to help out in a school similar to Emma to make themselves feel better. And I don't have time to help people feel better because in today's school, and especially a school like Emma, we teach with what I call intentional instruction, where every minute of every day counts. Maggie hands to me a 30-minute lesson plan, a 45-minute lesson plan, and a 60-minute lesson plan. And she says, this is what we'll be teaching with our kids. And let me tell you, it was very intentional, it was very focused. So I thought, holy cow, this group is no joke. They want to help kids on that individual level, more so than we can with the limited resources. We assigned those students, and the students uh, uh, then started meeting with the Reading Buddy about once a week. Uh, they created the relationships, and with the relationships and the intentional instruction, we've seen some of those growths in the reading scores that have been worked on before with the teacher, the teacher assistant, the Title I reading specialist, one of the Title I reading assistants, even special education teacher. And this other person is going to make sure that this child's going to succeed. If you really want to get involved with raising people up, you need to get hold of congregations for children. I think for individuals that have been providing the, the food backpacks on the weekends and the school supplies, this is going deeper because they'll have an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the child and can see that impact. I, I have a friend of mine who, uh, who, who likes to do mission work and I've always joked with him a little bit that you don't have to get on a plane to find mission, the mission field. You don't have to go to another country. Uh, uh, here in Asheville, we've got Patton Avenue and Kmart on Patton Avenue. Well, we're located uh, approximately behind that Kmart, so my sales pitch is if you want to find the mission field, you just have to turn right at Kmart on Patton Avenue, and I'll put you in the mission field.